All right, everyone, we start off today talking about Tricky Nikki, Nikki the Neocon, Nikki Haley. Uh, her credibility issues, a fairly large laundry list of them. Now, we'll get into, like, the warmongering, the neocon side, um, the lying side, etc. This is just sort of a shot across the bow preemptive video to uh, talk about a few of her worst qualities before anyone considers or conceives of her as being a potential GOP nominee for the presidency. I would not want her to be the president of the United States. She wouldn't win in the general anyway. She's too weak a candidate. Um, so if you're more of a, like a pragmatic partisan, you shouldn't be supporting her. It would be, be sort of like throwing away your vote for John Bolton, I suppose. By the way, you know, John Bolton, the more experienced warmonger, so if you are hawkish on, you know, foreign policy and you want World War III, Bolton's more likely to give it to you than Nikki Haley is, so you've already got your man in the race. He's almost never mentioned, by the way. I feel sorry for him almost. Well, I would if he wasn't responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths around the world anyway, uh, because Nikki Haley jumps in. And all the coverage is, this is Trump's first major competitor. They don't even talk about Bolton. They don't consider him a major competitor. For some reason, Nikki Haley, who's at like 3% in the polling, she, she somehow fits the bill better than Bolton. They're, I would consider them roughly co-equal. They're third, uh, third wheel candidates. Or third rail candidates. If the GOP wants to uh, piss on the third rail and alienate every MAGA voter, all they have to do is try to promote Nikki Haley. <laughs> or John Bolton again. But there's one very, very special tweet which comes to mind. It was sent in as a tip earlier. Thank you, Mike Clanker friend. I'm going to read this one, this real winner verbatim, because this should effectively collapse any possibility that any reasonable person would vote for her in a fucking primary. This is Nikki Haley back in June 22nd, 2020. I'm wondering if she's going to scrub her internet history at some point. Whoops, eh, archives are forever, Nikki, so don't even fucking bother. We should all stand with Bubba Wallace today against the cowards who secretly put the noose in his garage stall. Watch your back, cowards. Bubba has a bigger army than you do. Hashtag hate won't win. Hashtag we stand with Bubba. Hashtag it wasn't very long before this was a, a really, really sour milk take. You'll remember this particular incident, Bubba Wallace claiming that racists had put a noose in his garage. Oh my god. Holy f you know, it's a symbol that they want to lynch me, basically, and I'm a person of color, and this is unacceptable. The whole legacy media went with it. Nikki Haley and the neocons went with it, you know, to be fashionable, to be hip with, with the Zoomer generation, jumping on the outrage bus, only to find that it was not a noose, it was a drawstring. You remember those things that were quite common in the past on the garage door or, you know, the, the door on the front of a storage container or whatever? You know how it has a little string hanging down and a little loop on the end? You know, like it could be construed as looking vaguely noose-like, but of course it's a proper design for the drawstring. They've been used for a very long time. Uh, they don't all just come with a little metal handle. Some of them have a drawstring on them. Uh, make it easier to open uh, and shut. Uh, and this was construed as a noose, and it was run with by the entire outrage bus uh, media and by people like Nikki Haley, and they were entirely discredited. Most of them never uh, retracted or apologized. Same with Jesse Smollett. It was the same exact kind of thing. Jesse Smollett got beaten up by a couple of white skinheads shouting, this is MAGA territory, and they had a noose and bleach, and it was terrible. Of course, it turned out that it was a couple of Jesse Smollett's black, literally African associates who had been working with him uh, that did this, and it was all an attention-seeking ploy. Jesse getting a slap on the wrist punishment, as I predicted that he would, and now he's back to his old bullshit again, uh, I believe, at this time, actually. Uh, didn't, he, didn't he go to jail for a little while? I don't know if he's out yet. Anyway, it's not proper punishment for uh, so, you know, causing that level of uh, violence and rioting in the wake of it, as there was. The famous George Floyd Summer of Love comes to mind. Neocons uh, like this, who have no principles, and simply hopped on this story, as Nikki Haley did. Again, link in the description, read it for yourself, and it's archived as well. So you can just run that same URL through archive.today and you'll see what I mean. Uh, she can't scrub it. Uh, Archive.today, unlike uh, the Internet Wayback Machine, doesn't give a shit about your politics and covering your ass for you. I don't even know if it's a U.S.-run site. Uh, oftentimes it's a dot .philippines, basically. Anyway, she is effectively disqualified by this. If you're going to run in the Republican Party, if it were Democrat, nobody would care. If you're going to run as a Republican, 
most Republicans being aware of you having done the outrage bus, Jesse Smollett 2.0 thing, are not going to consider voting for you. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Doing the neocon shuffle thing for Cloud on Twitter is, is bad enough. She's a warmonger, uh, and, and has been consistently. She is a liar. She, she has lied multiple times. It's very f and, and also she's a sexist. We'll get into that. Liar, I say specifically, because she swore up and down. This was back when, uh, when uh, uh, Trump was still running. No, no, if uh, Trump runs for your election, I would never consider voting uh, uh, against him. I would, uh, I would support him. I wouldn't throw my hat in the ring. Well, now, of course, for entirely self-serving reasons, Nikki Haley has decided to jump into the ring, which she explicitly said uh, a year ago she would not do under any circumstances. So you've started off your campaign with embarrassing yourself. Um, you probably should have scrubbed your Twitter before you jumped in. Uh, and, and lying uh, outright about her former boss, actually. Uh, now, now she's all in against MAGA. Well, I don't really have a, I have a problem with it now. I, I've seen the light, everyone. And by the way, she will get a pass from the Democrats. They'll, they'll hold their fire on Nikki Haley to some extent and give her fluff pieces because she finally saw the light. She worshipped before the altar of Orange Man Bad. It's almost like a religious conversion sort of situation. You can be the worst sinner in the world. You were ultra MAGA. But then you saw the light because you wanted money or a VP slot or something. And so now that you've admitted that orange man bad, all is forgiven, my child. Your sins have been cleansed and you're as white as the snow. Go forth and do no more evil. That's uh, effectively the way that it works within politics at the moment and the legacy media too. So if you're just grifting and you want to write a memoir about your experiences uh, involving Trump basically, so you're grifting off of his existence, uh, you have to do the orange man bad thing like Bolton did. Otherwise, you know, you won't be able to get a lucrative deal wherein China buys several hundred thousand copies of your book inexplicably. She, her book will be really, really popular in Shanghai and Beijing, I'm sure, when she releases it. And also, you've got the sexism issue. Uh, it, sometimes it takes a woman effectively as her campaign slogan. So, you know, don't look at my policies, everyone. Yeah, I'm basically John McCain with ovaries. Don't look at my other credibility issues. You're a sexist if you don't support me. It takes a woman. And you can put your hands on your hips and tilt your head sideways and do the sassy finger thing. Oh, no, you didn't. Uh, and, and that'll be Nikki Haley's campaign. That's basically what she's running on. Orange man bad. Hey, I'd like to bomb more kids, and uh, Trump really screwed up. He didn't bomb enough of them. I think we need to expand our efforts over in Yemen and Ukraine and Syria and maybe go back in Afghanistan. Hey, let's occupy Taiwan while we're at it and everywhere else in the world. Everywhere except for the U.S. southern border. That seems to be the neocon line. Our own borders? Fuck them. Leave them alone. Don't do anything. It's too expensive. We can't spend a few tens of billions to shore up our southern border, but we can damn well do that every single goddamn month to prop up the Ukrainians. <laughs> that will be Nikki Haley's line as well. So, uh, to be clear, if the GOP is nuts enough to nominate her, or Bolton, or Pence for that matter, or anyone like that, a neocon, a, a John McCain, Jeb Bush knockoff, I will not vote for them. It uh, doesn't mean that I vote for the Democratic Party. I'd probably write in Mickey Mouse at that point, unless there's some third-party spoiler, which could literally be Donald Trump in such a situation. I would vote for him on an independent ticket, just despite a party that had obviously completely lost its way after being briefly led by someone who knew what they were doing. That's about all. Peace out.